All right, so in this video, we'll be continuing our coverage of simple harmonic motion, specifically looking at uh, calculating the various values in these equations giving uh, using known constants, as well as relating the various values so that we can solve for the motion giving a limited amount of information. So we'll start off first by calculating this omega value right here. And what you first want to do is and obtain an equation for f of x or you know torque as a function of theta depending on whether or not you're operating linearly or rotationally. Now the next thing you want to do is differentiate to find what's known as the k effective. In other words the k value that you experience uh, in this model. And in this case it works because as we know f equals negative kx or differentially df equals negative k dx or k equals negative df dx. So that's how you determine the k effective value for the system. And then from here just based on what we derived earlier with you know the ma equals negative kx and then we differentiated twice etc you plug in this k value into the simple equation for omega omega equals k over m or omega equals root k over i depending on whether or not you're operating linearly or rotationally and it's important to memorize these equations just because it'll make your uh, thought process for simple harmonic motion problems a lot easier. So now that we have all of that defined, we're moving on, we'll move on now to uh, relating angular frequency to uh, linear frequency and seeing how those relate. So we'll start off by defining what a cycle is. And now that's basically uh, one oscillation. So you know you go from negative a through to a all the way back to negative a, which makes sense because you know if you start out with a pendulum and you go to the equilibrium point and back, one cycle you traditionally think of as going all the way here, turning around, and the pendulum coming all the way back. Now the linear frequency, so linear frequency which is usually represented by the letter F is the number of cycles per second. And this is usually represented by S to the negative one or hertz are the units typically used for frequency. Now it should be noted that because omega tends to be in radians, omega is in radians per second and linear frequency is in cycles per second. We know however that just going all the way around the circle there are two pi radians in one cycle. Therefore the linear frequency equals uh, omega divided by two pi because dividing through by two pi you transfer those radians into circumferences and that gives you the total number of cycles. Lastly, we already discussed the definition of period and frequency in the last video, but we know that period is the time it takes to go through one cycle. And because this is, you know, cycles per unit time and period is time per unit cycle, we know that they're inversely related or that frequency is one over t. Now, putting these two together, combining these two equations, essentially, we can interrelate uh, this angular velocity as well as the period of oscillation. So, plugging in 1 over t for f, we get that 1 over t equals omega over 2 pi, or that omega equals 2 pi over t. And this is definitely an equation worth memorizing because knowing the period of oscillation is very useful uh, as far as getting your equations all lined up. So now we'll look at uh, how energy and simple harmonic 
motion relate as well as uh, how this concept helps us to figure out a general equation for motion based on just knowing its velocity and position. So we'll start off looking at this 2 kilogram mass on a 10 newton per meter spring. I will say that when it's at position 1 meter from equilibrium, its velocity equals 13 meters per second. Now, if you'll recall, at maximum amplitude, the object is temporarily not moving because it's reversing direction. Uh, so we know that it is temporary, temporarily stationary or its kinetic energy equals zero because its velocity is zero. So if we want to solve for the maximum amplitude of this system, all I have to do is because we're working with only conservative forces, set the energy we know at this point right here equal to the maximum amplitude and solve for the distance of that amplitude. So we know that the initial energy equals the final energy or the kinetic energy at one part plus the potential energy at that part equals the potential energy at the amplitude because there's no kinetic energy at this point. Plugging in values now, we get that the 2 kilogram mass moving 13 meters per second over 2 plus the 10 newton meter or newtons per meter k value times a displacement of 1 meter from equilibrium over 2 equals, uh, you know, 10 over 2 a squared. Now we can do some canceling across the board here. These twos cancel out. That becomes a five. And this all becomes a five as well. Now we get that uh, 169 plus five equals five a squared. Now dividing through, we get that a squared equals uh, 34 point eight or that a equals five point nine meters. So in this situation we know that the maximum this will ever reach from its equilibrium point is five point nine meter displacement. So now we'll move on and do one more practice problem to sort of close out this chapter and we'll look at a situation in which you have a block hanging on a spring from some ceiling you know uh, with amplitude a and at its maximum velocity, it's going a velocity v. Now what we want to find is the period of oscillation in terms of that amplitude and that velocity. So we'll start out by setting up a energy equation. We know that uh, the energy will stay the same the whole time, so the initial and final energies are the same. But we'll now write that ka squared over 2, which is the maximum amplitude and therefore the maximum potential energy of the system, is equal to mv squared over 2. That is when there's no potential energy relative to the equilibrium point and all of it is in terms of this v max value. Now what we can do is solve for the k and we find that k equals mv squared over a squared Using this known k value now, we can plug it into our equation that we know for uh, period. Essentially, we know that omega equals uh, root k over m, or that t equals 2 pi root m over k, because if you'll recall, omega equals 2 pi over t as we have written down here. Now all we have to do is plug in that k value and we get that t equals 2 pi times the root of m a squared uh, over mv squared. Now the m's cancel out and we get that the period of oscillation is 2 pi a over v. And that concludes our coverage of simple harmonic motion. In the next video, we'll be uh, closing out our look at mechanics, look, looking this time at Newton's laws of gravitation and universal gravitation.